welcome back to Reading the Vortex, which is channeled by uh, Esther Hicks, who channeled Abraham, or continues to to this day, um, and who many of you have most likely heard of and know a lot about. Here we are reading Find Alignment First and Then Take Action, which is absolutely something that I've heard Abraham say over and over again and something that I very much try to live by. In every society of the vast number of societies on your planet today, you have instituted rules, requirements, taboos, laws, along with a great variety of rewards and punishments for conforming or not conforming. As each society seems determined to sort into separate piles the wanted from the unwanted. And although you work very hard at the sorting process, the piles continue to shift around and you never come even close to a consensus of wanted and unwanted, right and wrong, good and bad. I think that's absolutely true through all of history. We never come close to that because the goalposts are always changing. It is our desire that as a result of just reading this one book, you will never again require global community, or even a partner's agreement in order to find your confidence, direction, and power. We want you to remember that the need for agreement from others comes from a basis of misunderstanding of the laws of the universe and runs counter to who you really are. It is our desire that by understanding your own personal guidance system, you will return to alignment with the power that flows to you and through you. For by your finding agreement with the power that flows forth from within you, the harmony that you seek on all other levels and all other subjects and with all others will then and only then be possible. Most people would deem it unwise to load a big clumsy truck which had a very bad suspension system and a steering mechanism so worn out that it is almost impossible to keep the truck on the road with their most precious cargo. Or, most people would deem it unwise to gather a load of precious glass antiques and put them in the carrying basket of the bicycle that their five-year-old son is taking on his first bicycle ride today. Or, most people would deem it unwise to carry a sack containing their life savings and all their favourite jewellery and then walk out onto the iced over lake before they were sure that the ice was actually strong enough to hold their weight. In other words, it always makes sense to first find fundamental stability before embarking on any journey, journey, especially those journeys that matter most to you. And yet, as people interact with one another on important subjects, they commonly, commonly plunge headlong into conversations and decisions and behaviours before they have achieved any sense of true stability. And then the return to stability is often very long in coming. And often, once out of balance, they stumble into the next, and then the next, and then the next out of control experience. Through the examples in this book, it is our desire to help you remember the art of alignment first, then action. Alignment first, then conversation. Alignment first, then interaction. Alignment first, then anything else. People sometimes say, think before you speak. A wise intention, but we would take it further. We would suggest think, and then evaluate the value of that thought by noticing how it feels, and do that often enough that you know without question that you are in alignment, then speak, then act, then interact. Someone who takes the time to understand their relationship with source, who actively seeks alignment with their broader perspective, who deliberately seeks and finds alignment with who they really are, is more charismatic, more attractive, more effective and more powerful than a group of millions who have not achieved that alignment. The historical masters and healers whom you revere understood the value of this personal alignment. And in this book about relationships, we submit to you. There is no relationship of greater importance to achieve than the relationship between you in your physical body right here and now and the soul, source, God from which you have come. 
If you tend to that relationship first and foremost, you will then, and only then, have the stable footing to proceed into other relationships. Your relationship with your own body, your relationship with money, your relationship with your parents, children, grandchildren, the people you work with, your government, your world, will all fall swiftly and easily into alignment once you tend to this fundamental primary relationship first. I love that. Uh, this is something I live by. I've heard so many people ask Abraham so many times and they, you know, they talk a lot about how to do this, how to even get in alignment. And they have many different strategies and techniques uh, like pre-paving. So before you know you're going to have to do something on a day, you want to get in alignment with it. If you're resisting something, you don't try to force yourself to do it. You wait or you Put yourself in a position where you work towards the alignment before you engage with that thing. Whether it is doing some chores, some work, visiting a friend, just anything, exercise, whatever it is, you want to always get into alignment first. And that your resistance is coming from a lack of alignment and you should try to get in alignment if it's something that you really want to do or you can also just wait for alignment. I guess I do a little bit of both. Whatever, whatever I want to do, if I'm experiencing resistance to, I think, this is what I'm going to do next, but I don't really want to, I can't be bothered, I'm procrastinating, I can't make myself do it, then I do one or two things, probably one of three things. One thing is I will try to reset my energy, which might be by, you know, I'll go and do something else. Like I'll go and do some cleaning usually because that is something that tends to reset me easily. Or if it's quite intense, I'll take a nap. And you know that Abraham is a big uh, supporter of naps for resetting your energy and your alignment. So I could do that. Or I might um, instead... Try to line up with the thing that I'm wanting to do. So I might think about how it will make me feel good or uh, try and like experience the joyfulness of it. Or if not the joy, because obviously that's higher on the emotional scale than the relief perhaps. Whatever it is that I know that I want to experience once I've passed through it or the satisfaction, or whatever it might be. I look for the feeling that would be associated with aligning with that thing. And then, if it's, if like I'm not going to do either of those, then I'll wait for the inspiration. And that's actually what happened to me before I sat down to read with you today, is I had a couple of other things that I had told myself I would do today. And then all day, I've had such great resistance to doing them. I did try the nap. That didn't really work to wake up with alignment in the direction of one of those other things. Then I happened to just, you know, look over to the bookshelf and I decided, yep, today's the day that I'm going to start reading the book. So I just told myself just to pick the book up because I wasn't sure if I was going to read it. And as soon as I opened it, I just felt that surge of excitement about reading the book, about the like how good it would feel to read the book and picked it up and started doing and started doing it. And I, this was the right decision. And that was more an inspired action. I felt inspired to do that rather than it was intentional. It was all of a sudden I received the inspiration to do it and here I am doing it. So that is some examples of alignment um, and how to get into alignment that I hope um, you will find to be useful to you too. And again, I'm sure there'll be much more on it as we go through on this journey together. I'll see you back here soon for the next part.